All right, welcome in Taurus and Scorpio. You guys are sitting right across from each other in the sky and in the zodiacal wheel. <laughs> so we have a massive uh, shift happening this weekend. It's going to uh, cast a shadow or throw the sun on the next 20 years ahead, depending on how you're looking at it. So Taurus and Scorpio, you guys are paired up in the, Zod in the Zodiac. I don't know if you know that, but you are. And the uh, axis of Taurus and Scorpio is about risk versus um, change or security. And that is what is really happening between Taurus and Scorpio. If you look at those two energies, you know, Taurus is all about resources and value and safety and security. Think Venus. It's ruled by Venus. So it's like, I want to be comfortable. Uh, Scorpio is about going deep, but it's also about other people's resources. It's about how am I keeping safe in the world? Is it me bringing in resources or am I connecting to other people who have resources? And it's also security versus change. And uh, if you look at it like this, you know, Taurus and Scorpio are, you have to have both. You can't have all Taurus, meaning um, I'm going to stay in my house. I was born into this family and I'm going to stay in this room and I'm going to live in this room until I die. And if you wake up when you're 40 and everybody else is gone and you've got to take care of yourself, you haven't been out in the world, you haven't taken any risks, that's about the least safe place to be, right? And opposite of that, Scorpio is all about going deep, is all about transformation and change. It's all about not being afraid to look it right in the eye and all of that. Um, it is about risk all the time, but at some point you need to rest. Okay. You have to have a balance of those two things. Security enables you to take risks and risks bring in more security. Okay. So uh, uh, in 2008, we had Pluto popping its way into Capricorn. And for you guys, I'm going to go into this a lot more in uh, the extended uh, because I have some notes here. Um, Taurus to Capricorn is a sextile, right? Is a, oh, sorry, is a, is a um, Taurus to Capricorn <laughs> is a trine. And that's 120 degrees. But what a trine actually means is it's very compatible energy. So Taurus and Capricorn like kind of know each other. They kind of are fine with each other. So for the past 15 years, this whole idea, the earth to earth kind of things, like we get each other, we're kind of simpatico. And um, so for, for this Taurus Scorpio um, um, axis, the movement of Pluto into Aquarius is going to be different. For the past 15 years, it's been kind of easy for Pluto in Capricorn for both Taurus and Scorpio. It's been kind of easy. It's been kind of compatible. But when Pluto moves into Aquarius, it forms a square with Taurus and Scorpio. So that means tension, conflict. So take a look back in uh, 2023 uh, in like March, April, May, because we had Pluto wobble into Aquarius for just a couple months there. And just take a look or try to remember, or if you have a journal, just you're not going there to reclaim those memories and change whatever happened. You're not. You're just looking at, oh, this was going on. This person came into my life. This happened. You know, whatever was good enough to make the highlight reel of your journal. Um, and just take a look at that because Pluto moving into Aquarius brings into conflict a couple of things. Pluto is about change and transformation, right? And so these are general readings. So I'm not looking at your, the houses necessarily. I'm just looking at the energies. So if you're sun, moon, rising, or Venus, Taurus, sun, moon, rising, or Venus, Scorpio, you're going to be squaring this Pluto energy in Aquarius. Now, I'm going to go deeper into this in the extended, but what it can look like is because we're talking about risk versus safety, Scorpio's risky, <laughs> it's transformational, but it's change, right? And Taurus is like, no, 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 don't like change, okay? So what have you learned over the past 15 years of, and some of you may totally disagree with what I'm gonna say right now, having it a little easy. 
you've had it a little easy in terms of full transformation. Now you may not have had it easy in other parts of your life or parts of your life that didn't get completely, you know, turned over, but you're like, yeah, it's cool. You know what I mean? Like you didn't really feel that Pluto like you're going to feel that Pluto. So there are going to be some big, um, big changes um, with Taurus in Capricorn. You might, your job might have just flowed along or whatever, and you weren't paying attention to upgrading your skills, especially when it relates to um, technology. And all of a sudden, you're going to have to go out into the wor work world and face technology as it is in 2024, not even as it was in 2008. OK, so that might be a challenge for Taurus. You might be excited about that, depending on what else is in your chart. Um, the fundamental change that is going to be happening is all about freedom and independence. And because that's Aquarian energy. And so Taurus needs to get out into the world of work to gain their sense of independence. Scorpio needs to get away maybe from family structures or too much, um, too much safety and security about not paying attention to money, maybe getting an inheritance. And so it just kind of drains, drains away. Like I wasn't paying attention to it or your spouse or somebody else takes care of the money. Like you're going to have to pay more attention because Capricorn, it was like, well, this is how it works. This is the rules. And so Scorpio and Taurus energy kind of floated along. But now that it moves into Aquarius, that is about innovation in a different way than Scorpio is about change. Scorpio is about death. So one life sense of my life is over. Another one begins. So I'm going to say to you that I do feel like Scorpio might have an easier go of it with this square, with Pluto squaring uh, Scorpio energy. Scorpio's like, bring it. Okay. But Scorpio may need to anchor themselves in some, some kind of security. They can't just let it all go, right? They have to pay attention to things now. And the same thing with Taurus. Like they can't just kind of skate along on their good looks anymore. They're going to actually have to um, put some, you know, put some energy behind innovating themselves. Okay. So I'm going to get deeper into that um, in the extended. We'll talk more about that. I want to know, you know, as we go into this reading, What's it going to take for a person who is really profoundly Taurus, Taurus energy or profoundly Scorpio to navigate this? Because we have seven months. We have Pluto moving into Aquarius. It moved a little bit last year in 2023, like I said, March, April, May. But now on January 20th, Pluto is moving into Aquarius for about eight or nine months this year. It's going to wobble back into Capricorn. September, October, November, uh, half of November. And then it's going to go into Aquarius for good. 20 years. Good. Okay. For the next 20 years. So let's get a sense of Taurus and Scorpio here in this reading. Flexible. All right. I do have soulmates under here. So there can be something about love in this reading. It may have more to do with uh, financial because the backdrop of Scorpio and Taurus is is financial, but it's also Venus. Venus rules, Venus rules um, Taurus and Pluto rules Scorpio. So that's kind of like a uh, do or die, like a love, you know, I the love of my life or I'm not going to do it at all. This is a little bit too rigid. OK, Taurus and Scorpio could definitely if you're um, if you're experiencing Scorpio or Taurus energy in its in its sort of wounded place, then rigidity definitely is something that they have in common. Okay. But risk versus security is when you bounce back and forth, Taurus and Scorpio, risk and security, that's the way to navigate that axis. Okay. So as we're going into Pluto, moving into Aquarius, this axis is going to be activated that way. Going to be activated by challenge. So heads up. Okay. Chop wood, fork in the road, my friend, definitely fork in the road. Ah, look at this serendipity. Good luck. So I want you, you know, all of this stuff I've been saying, I can, I, I can see where some of you Scorpios, if you're dealing with this reading might be like, oh, I can handle it. I'm a Scorpio. Like I'm, you know, I'm, um, impervious to all you light, lightweights and stuff like that. 
<laughs> but I feel like there's something here that's going to be um, beautifully light that comes out of this. Really beautifully light because what also we need to know about the energy of Aquarius, which is what we're talking about, this transit of Pluto and Aquarius. What we're talking about is what works for the collective. If we have one person really suffering, one person or an individual really uh, being downtrodden or beat up on or somebody who is outcast and outcast, uh, the Aquarian energy just says, you know what? We need to handle this. We need to handle this. We cannot have this happen. The Aquarian energy is about let's put, you know, Pluto and Aquarius, let's transform things by making community. Okay. And making unity. That can be a big deal. Now for Scorpios and Taurians in this big transit, you may find you're at a crossroads. What am I going to do? Am I going to stay safe or am I going to take a big risk? And I think that could be a theme that's running through the next 20 years with the notable exception of September, October, and half of November. I just feel like if you are willing to see the light side of things, almost like taking on a Sag vibe, right? Like uh, if you're willing to see the good in everything, if you're willing to see the healed energy in everything, that might be the, the requirement right now. We've had 15 years of Pluto and Capricorn asking you to do the work of taking a risk or not, of focusing on my security without innovating anything. That could show up uh, in terms of a, maybe a, a hard lesson because we're talking about a square. Um, so chopping wood, fork in the road, and serendipity. I feel like if you've done the work, if you've been like, you know what? Yeah, like I, you know, I like my luxury, but I have um, learned about money. I have learned to take it on myself. I've learned about investments. I've learned about savings. I've learned about how to create money, not just take somebody else's inheritance and work with it, which is not a bad skill to have. It's certainly a helpful skill. But how did, I, how did that person make that money? That's what's probably, it depends on where you are in that group of, of scenarios. Are you the person who's got the inheritance and you're taking that on? Or are you somebody who's been the worker to create that wealth and that's translating to you? Either way, I just feel like this has to do with um, both of those things have uh, a respectability about them. I think those two things, we could see that in a big, right? We're talking now, I'm sort of zooming out to the collective. We could have a big struggle between the haves and the have nots coming up. I think that's not a new idea. I think a lot of people have talked about that in our society, that people who um, don't um, contribute, they're, you know, they're, it's like generational wealth. They're not they're not really um, contributing on the, the work side. Uh, and, you know, that may drain away. And so people who have skills out in the world may be the ones who win, may be the ones who know how to navigate, right? Or vice versa. The ones who have uh, wealth are the ones who have choices. And the people who don't have wealth are the ones who are being uh, lots more heavy weight is being put on their back. OK, so this is the axis of Taurus and Scorpio as it relates to a collective. Now, how does that relate to you? How does that relate to you? If you have a lot of Taurus and Scorpio energy, then you're concerned about money, finances, uh, wealth, well-being, um, taking a risk, being safe, being secure, right? These are all the energies that flow back and forth between Scorpio and um, and Taurus. Now, Scorpio could be secretive about money. Taurus can be low vibration, lazy about money, but no, not lazy about money, uh, not wanting to work. Uh, a high vibration Taurus is about um, really using their skill sets to generate finances for themselves and for other people. Scorpio can be about um, deeply feeling connected, taking a chance on somebody. Yeah. All right. With that square to Pluto, whatever you have been, 
how you're walking out of Pluto square, um, sad, uh, sorry, Scorpio or Taurus, you're going to be a very different person. I guarantee it. Okay. So underneath is this Knight of Pentacles. This is about putting in effort, right? For uh, the Seven of Cups, the Lovers, the Eight of Cups, the Three of Cups, and this Four of Swords healing energy. So I feel like some of you might have sacrificed love for stability. Some of you have resisted getting out of a relationship to go toward love. Uh, some of you have chosen um, financial uh, liquidity <laughs> over the love of your life. Wh wherever you're sort of falling in this reading, I feel like um, I feel like there is a sense of big change. So if you've always been super cautious about money, I feel like you're sort of seeing the value in taking a risk or you're going to be seeing the value in taking a risk. You're going to be seen to see taking a value and uh, taking a risk in terms of love. Some of you Taurians may have to take a risk in terms of love. Some of you Scorpios may have to um, pull back in terms of the deep feelings and the uh, connection to a person and soulmates and everything and create some kind of stability for yourself. Love and money are the things that we're talking about right now. Are you choosing one over the other to the, you know, to the extinguishing of the other in your life? Some of you Scorpios could just feel that other people are in charge of that stuff and money is just flowing or I'm just, you know, I, I getting inheritances, I'm getting this, I'm getting that. Now with the Capricorns, with the, uh, sorry, Aquarius, Pluto and Aquarius square, there might be a sense of, oh, it's much more about the family. It's not about it goes to one person or it goes to another person. There's definitely something here about that. So let's do the reading and I'll go more into the I'll go more into the astrology in the extended here. So you're showing up as the magician. You can manifest anything. All right, you can manifest anything. Tower. There's Pluto right there. Opportunity moon we have the full moon in leo coming up next week what's the universe saying there is something about trust here i don't know very many uh i know a few scorpios i know a few taurus i know one at least one taurus that i know their motto is trust no one and I feel like that comes from the opposition to Scorpio, that they have a sun in Taurus, meaning it's opposing any planet in Scorpio. This is what we're talking about, this axis of trust versus security, risk versus um, uh, change. Risk, No, risk and change are the same versus security. So I feel like some of you may... Um, may have felt very, very safe because when Pluto was in Capricorn, the war, this was making you feel very, very safe, right? Because Taurus is, is very compatible um, with Capricorn as is um, Scorpio. But now that we are in a square, I feel like people are going to take advantage of you in ways that you never imagined. I feel like you have been able to just kind of rule with impunity Taurus and Scorpio for a long time and this full moon in Leo that's coming up is an opportunity so let's see what that's about King of Cups is um how we got here so some of you are deeply in love or deeply in um working on your own ability to love some of you love money. Some of you love are in love with money. You don't know what it's like to not have money or you don't choose a partner because they have no money. You just don't do it. You're just like, nope, that's a value that I have. Some of you Scorpios may um, be focused on other people's money to the extinction of your own ability to create money for yourself, something like that. So up in the future, we've got the world. Chapter closing, chapter opening, seven of pentacles. I just feel like a very docile energy 
for the past 15 years, even if there have been upheavals or even if there have been um, things going on, health issues, whatever, there's been a solid baseline of at least the money flows or at least the good health flows or something like that, because this is definitely about that. This is definitely about um, my security and my ability to stand on my own two feet. So the thing that may upset the apple cart here is feelings. Feelings, not about money and about the choices we make in love that relate to our own value, our own um, ability to create a life or that person's going to create the life for me. I feel like some of you, okay, so some of you might have ended a marriage. I'm just going to talk about love here for a second. Some of you might have ended a marriage because somebody got blown up financially. Some of you may be... Um, in a relationship or, or in love with someone who has no money. And that's a challenge. It's going to become a, a bigger challenge. Some of you may fall in love with somebody that has no money and you have to take a risk. Some of you may have some kind of job or career path that you're really in love with and you have to take a risk. All right. So here's how you're showing up. The page of wands, the queen of wands, the eight of wands, and the king of swords. All right. So there's Aquarian energy. This Aquarian energy is about freedom. People have money, have freedom. But I feel like there's something about those, uh, that belief system that is going to prove to be untrue. Okay. So something, something you hold to be true about, you know, the value of people. Someone who has a lot of money must be a good person. Really? I think we've looked at that one recently, haven't we? Um, or people who don't have money are bad people. Really? That also is getting blown up. So some kind of ideas you have about how, you know, valuable people are or are not as it relates to resources is going to come up for um, adjudication. I feel like the, the big change is about love. I feel like some of you fall in love with a penniless pauper. I feel like some of you fall out of love with, with um, you know, an heir, an heiress. And some of you are also dealing with feeling um, you've been lied to. Okay. So we're going to go deeper into this reading. I know this is a lot to take in. Uh, but we are talking about Taurus and Scorpio and I'm talking about wounded Taurus as much as I'm talking about healed Taurus, wounded Scorpio, as much as healed Scorpio. These readings are for Taurus and Scorpio, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. And we will go into the astrology more in the extended. All right. If you want to continue on, I'm going to see what you need more of, what you need less of, and we'll kind of forecast out and see how this might show up in your life. Okay. Link is below. I'll see you over there. All right. I hope you enjoyed that video. If it was helpful to you, please consider liking this video and sharing it with anybody who might have a need for similar kind of information. And if you like this video, check out these videos.